Hey everyone! So I am super excited because it is finally time to start up the garden tours again. So every month at the beginning of the month, not always exactly on the first, but as close to the first as possible, I like to go around and show you my garden. That way I can go back and look at previous months and really see how much has changed month over month. Because kind of when you're in the thick of things, I feel like you don't really notice how much has changed and how much work you've really done from one month to the next in your garden. So these are always really fun for me. I like to look back not only on the same videos from, or the videos from the same year, but also videos from previous years. And I was actually trying to find March's tour from last year, and I guess I did not do one. So I think I started in April last year, but now it is beautiful outside. I think it's like high 50s and sunny, and there are some signs of growth in the garden, not a ton, but I thought this would be a good time to show you around because you can kind of see the structure of my garden. So there's not really a lot growing in the raised beds and the containers, but that makes it easier for me to show them off to you. And then also you can see kind of where my perennials are that I've overwintered on the deck. I haven't really moved many since I first put them kind of into their positions when winter was starting. Um, so we'll kind of take a look and see how they're doing I haven't confirmed they're all still alive. That'll probably happen as things start to warm up as we get closer to spring, but these just kind of signal to me the beginning of the garden season, even though it still is technically winter here and I think we're supposed to get snow in a few days. Um, but this is always where I'm like, okay, it's starting, it's happening, it's time to get gardening. So let me go ahead and show you what my garden looks like in March of 2023. So here is what we are looking like early March this year. All four of my raised beds are from the brand Gronomics. This one was my original bed that I think I got back in 2019 and then I kind of added them over the years. The center one here is my largest raised bed. It's I think 34 by 48 inches. These two are 24 by 48 and then this one is the smallest and the shortest at 18 by 48. But I actually like having the variety of heights because this is really great since I don't have to bend over to garden um, but this one I can grow taller things like I grew my sunflowers that I'll show you some of the stalks are still there in a second but I can grow sunflowers and not have to worry about them being too tall and blowing over in the wind. So now let's see what is in the bed. Now in this one I planted um, how many tulips did I plant? At least a hundred I think. I'll have to go back to actually remember what variety was in here but I think it's a mix of like pinks and purples. I guess we'll see. Um, but last year I don't think I had any sprouts of the tulips until end of March, like March 20 something. But we were already getting, I mean there's not a ton, but there is one right here that came up end of February. And then it looks like I just saw this. There's another little nub right there. Coming over here, I just saw this one yesterday. So I mean, again, not a ton, but it's good to see signs of life so that I know that my tulips didn't die over winter. I didn't do anything to the tulips in here after I planted them, just let whatever happened over winter happen. So I didn't cover it or anything like that. They came back fine last year. That was the first time I had tulips in these beds. So fingers crossed they bloom beautifully again this year. And then after they're done blooming, I cut the flowers off. I dig up the bulbs while the leaves are still green and I transplant them down to the parkway. So that's another thing I'm going to see this year is did that work last year? because if it didn't, I'm probably not gonna bother transplanting them down there. Um, but I treat my tulips up here kind of like annuals. I remove them, um, hopefully transplant them or give them away. And then I just plant fresh bulbs in here. There are also tulips in this bed, a different variety, but I haven't seen any signs yet of them poking through. And again, I'm not super worried because it did take longer last year than it has so far this year so not seeing any yet isn't worrying me too too much. So a few reasons why I kind of treat mine like annuals up here is that if I left the bulb so let's say they were done blooming I let the foliage yellow one I think that would take too long into the growing season where I want to get my warm weather annuals out here earlier then I would be able to cut back the foliage on the tulip. So that's one reason. Another reason is that 
I've never tried this, but based on the recommendations of people that I've asked, by having the tulips in there, I give my summer annuals so much water that it's very likely they will rot. And I did have tulip bulbs rot in my smaller pots last spring because we had such a cold, wet spring that basically all of my bulbs I planted that weren't in these larger raised beds, the containers just held too much moisture for too long and the bulbs rotted. So I do know that is something that has happened in my garden. So that's why I just dig them up, replant them. Again, we'll see, fingers crossed, if that worked this year. Um, and then I just plant fresh bulbs every year and year, but just in those two raised beds for now. So now I'll go show you my other containers. Oh, but first I can't forget, my two blueberries are over here and the very exciting addition. I do have that one on the platform, which I just showed you a few videos ago, so I can easily wheel that around. I have, it came in a pack of six, so I have five more of those rolling platforms. I'm gonna put one under here. I think the other four, I'm going to save for the four fruit trees that should be coming this spring. So that's all that's over in this corner. Again, that has tulip bulbs in it. Here's my drip irrigation that I need to kind of do some maintenance on, probably in the next month or two. Then I have these three grow bags. So these are each 30 gallon grow bags, very hard to move. I can shift them a few inches either way, but they are very dense. Um, I get about two feet of growing depth in these compared to my raised beds, which are about 18 inches. So I like to use these for, well, mostly tomatoes, but also really, really tall flowers that I know are gonna take up a lot of root space. I had my giant zinnias in, I think these two bags last year. Um, so right now, this is completely empty. This one's completely empty. This one has some pansies that I couldn't bear to just pull from the center raised bed when I was planting my tulip bulbs, so I just tossed them in here. Um, I will clean those out though before I plant this up, but these will pretty much stay empty until I'm ready to move out like my warm weather annuals. Then over here, I have a bed that I am both excited about, but also think maybe I've made a mistake with what I'm gonna do with this also some garden waste I need to clean up. Um, but basically I didn't do anything to remove any plants in here at the end of fall. So, oh no, I'm lying. I did pull out two cabbages from here, but there were pansies, there were coneflowers. Was there anything else in here? I can't remember what these were. Maybe these were Black Eyed Susans. I'll have to double check. But my plan is to have this be a native bed so I got a seed pack of just native, both I think perennials and annuals. I spread some seeds in the fall and I've spread some again in the spring and I'm just gonna kind of see what happens. And obviously all of the coneflowers, they, those should come back. I need to cut them back. I'm gonna leave them here. But I mean, I know it's really good to grow natives, but I also really like control. So not having an idea of how this is going to look or what's going to grow just gives me you know a little bit of garden anxiety but it should be really cool to see how that does and then moving over here the final raised bed i was growing peas in the fall i pulled those and then just laid like chopped up the plant and laid it down in here to break down i think there's some pansies that were in there but i left up the nine sunflower stalks that i grew during the summer then I tied three of each together to use them as trellises for the peas and I'm leaving them, well I left them over winter and I'm leaving them here for the spring so that I can once again grow peas up them, which I'm gonna plant probably in about a week or two here. So that's gonna be really exciting. Um, but what I also did was I made some bird feeders out of just pine cones, peanut butter, and bird seed. Now I never actually saw, so one fell right down there, but I never actually saw birds eating it, which I, you know, had hoped to, but they have been picked clean. So I'm assuming the birds were out here and did enjoy the seed that I left them. And then also I really like how the little tiny buds of the sunflowers dried. So I'm probably going to save these to use as trellises somewhere else in the garden this year, but I think I'm going to cut like from here up and maybe put those in a vase because I think they're really pretty. I mean, they look like dead flowers, but they look like pretty dead flowers. Now there's nothing else over here yet, um, but on the other side are the perennials that I left out here to overwinter. 
also my flower cart, so I need to put the roof back on at some point. But I did end up taking the tarp off because just a few weeks ago, but the tarp basically acted like a sail and would catch the wind, and this was rolling around the deck. Didn't do any damage, but it did fall over a few times, so I just went ahead and took that off. Um, I have this metal can, which I use to transport garden waste from this deck to the back deck into the composter. I have just the regular garbage can here, my table with the square cover for a circle table that I bought for some reason, a chair that I never covered, because again, not the most responsible when it comes to overwintering my stuff, but it seems to be doing okay. Um, and then back here, let's move the garbage can out of the way. I have one raspberry bush. Back behind it, I have my aronia berry bush. I have a rose bush, which this is the one that I'm most like interested to see if it lived. I really hope it did, um, but obviously I didn't cover it or anything. I just shoved it in this corner and surrounded it by the other pots. So we'll see probably in a few weeks, I'm going to prune a little bit, both the raspberries and the rose bushes, and we'll see if there is any green in those stems. And then down here I have my rhubarb, which I cut all the way back and that should grow back. This will be the third year. Pretty sure it's the third year. So that is exciting because I think the third year is the most productive. So that is what is on kind of this front deck. Now, let me take you over to the back deck. So here's a quick sweep of the back deck. I have my greenhouse back there, furniture, composter, three raised beds, which I just got at the end of last year. So this will be really my first year with them. And then over here, I have my second raspberry bush, which I think I'm gonna move the one from the front over here to the back as well, um, just so I can keep them on the same deck. And then I have four containers of tulips and two little bushes that I took out of the greenhouse to get some sun. Uh, so down here I have two tater tots. I need to decide what I'm going to do with these. I got them at the Proven Winners event that I went to last November, I think it was. Um, so I have these two dwarf conifers. Let's see if it says how big they get here. So I know where I'm potentially going to put them. So they get about one to two feet tall and wide. Yeah, I think I'm going to put them in pots because I do want to add some more evergreens to this deck specifically. Um, just so I can look out and still have something to see in the winter. Now, this I'm really excited about. So like I mentioned earlier, all of the bulbs last year that I put in these smaller pots, so anything that was smaller than my raised beds, rotted and died. And I think it mostly happened in the spring um, because some of them had actually started to sprout and then stopped. And then once I dug up the bulb, it was basically rotten. Um, but now, since I overwintered these in the greenhouse, I have little sprouts coming. So there is one, two, three in this one. This one also has one, two, three. This one also, oh no, this one has four. One, two, three, four. And is this the lone one that hasn't sprouted anything? Yes, so hopefully, we get something coming up there soon. So like I said, last year, all of the bulbs in these smaller pots rotted. So what I did differently, last year I just basically left them out all winter like I do with my raised beds because I can't move my raised beds. But this year I moved those four into this greenhouse that I'll show you in a little bit um, that I had some other perennials in as well that are a little bit more cold, tender, tender to the cold, might die easier if I leave them out. Um, but I didn't put those in there for the cold as much as I did for the moisture. So I can control the moisture in there because if it rains or snows, it's not getting into the greenhouse. So I actually only watered those pots right when I planted the bulbs and then I moved them in here and that was it. Now I did take them out yesterday and it did rain a little bit last night. So they've basically had kind of a second watering now, but that's it. And I do plan to move them back into the greenhouse if we get like a lot of days of rain in a row. But the problem last year was it was so cold and rainy that the rain really didn't have time to evaporate before it rained again. So if the weather kind of looks like it's going to do that, I'll keep moving them in the greenhouse during the rainy periods, but I have basically shifted them outside for now.
And I did have some questions about whether it got cold enough in the greenhouse because obviously tulips do need a chill period. I think it's what, 12 weeks? At like 55 degrees or colder in the soil. And yes, it definitely gets below 55 degrees in there. I mean, the pots were, I had them stacked on top of each other and they were basically frozen together for the majority of the winter. So it definitely got cold enough for them in the greenhouse. But yeah, I'm really excited that it seems like this is working out this year because last year it was a little bit sad losing, I mean, at least probably 30 or 40 bulbs just from too much moisture, which I didn't really know was a possibility. So now coming up to the raised bed. So these two here both have bulbs in them. This one has bulbs that I got from Amazon that kind of smelled funny when I planted them. So I assume they might've been a little bit rotted. Um, there's nothing showing yet, but I'd say this is the bed that I'm expecting to fail the most, just because again, if they smell like they're rotten, probably not the best sign, but we'll kind of see what happens here. And then in this bed, I planted bulbs that I got from a uh, garden center in my hometown in Indiana. And there's nothing here yet either. So again, not super concerned yet, um, but I'm hoping to see some signs of life here soon. And this is the first thing I ever planted in here in both of these beds. I didn't have them last year during like the summer or early fall. So I didn't have anything growing. Then I have this little tree that I got from Home Depot around Christmas time last year. And I figured I'll move it up here. It actually smells really nice right now. And then I have another one that's like three or four feet tall on our front porch that I'm also gonna move up here. So again, just adding some sort of evergreens up here. So I have some green to look out the window at. And then this bed here is empty. So I will be filling this with soil this year and planting it up. Nothing for spring probably. I think I'll wait for the warm weather crops to fill this up. I have my composter and then over here a bunch of containers. Um, this used to have soil in it but I used that all up for my raised beds, my furniture, and the greenhouse which I should probably go ahead and open to give it some air. So I'm going to do that right now. All right greenhouse is open so back there is the one dahlia tuber that I'm testing overwintering out here. The other ones are in the garage. So we'll see if leaving it out here worked. I have a feeling it might have stayed both maybe too moist and too cold in here for the Dahlia tuber, but we'll see. Then I have two miniature knockout roses, two blueberries, uh, the grow bags are empty. I have a strawberry plant and then over here, three hydrangeas and this rose bush that the leaves were spotted on it and thank you to everyone who told me to just remove all the leaves so I did that and it looks much better now and you can see all of the buds forming along the stems so that is really exciting. So here's one final sweep of the back. I think I forgot to mention but these are from well this one's from the Charming Bench Company. I'll link where the other two are because I think got them from a different website but they're all the same raised bed and then my furniture all scooted out for the greenhouse. So that's what my garden is looking like so far in March. Like I said, not a lot happening yet, but I already know there's gonna be such a big difference when I look at April compared to where we are right now. Um, so I will post the links down below because I do put the previous year's garden tours in playlists. So I think I've only done this for 2021 and 2022. I'll link them both down below. Um, and other than that, I'm just excited to see everything that starts to happen in the garden. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.